welcome back to another week, another episode of Mind from the Mud. Uh, man, we are elated. As you can see, we're not in the studio. Uh, we're downtown at Linden Grill, a place that we eat frequently, a place that we come to fellowship. Uh, just a beautiful place for our community to gather. Um, so, I mean, without further ado, let's jump in, my brother. For sure. So, we like to start all of our podcast off by just kind of asking a little bit about yourself, like where you from, um, where you currently are, and where you plan to go. Okay. I'm from here, currently here, plan on being here now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm from South Bend, born and raised. Yeah. Um, really never migrated from here other than going to college. Okay. Um, coming back home after, after college. Kind of uh, felt this is always the place I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a pretty decent childhood, so I yeah. felt it was good to raise a family here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So so let's just talk a little bit about your family. Um, just about a little bit about your family background, um, where you come from, what side of town you was raised on, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. East side. East side. East side. Yeah. East side. Right where your grandparents from, oh yeah, east side. <laughs> yeah, we're from the east side. I went to um, Pearly, Edison, and Adams. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I was one year in there um, when they did the, um, our uh, sixth grade year where they um, did the busing, and I okay. went to Nooner. Okay. You know, went over there for one year, then uh, transitioned right over to Edison, then went to Adams. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm east side, man. You yeah. know, um, my business hasn't migrated over there yet, but hopefully, right. if yeah. Notre Dame save a little land, you know, we get <laughs> a little piece. <laughs> yeah, a little piece. <laughs> we'll get over there. But, um, yeah, you know, South Bend, um, like I say, went, went to school all through um, South Bend. Went to college in Mississippi, down in Alcorn State. Okay. Um, that's kind of um, where the business concept of Linden Grill evolved. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, funny, kind of unintentionally. Um, but that's kind of where things evolved down there in Mississippi. Okay. Um, and then um, came back home, and um, you know, like they say, the rest is history. But it's a long process in between there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. okay, so you leave Adams and you go to Alcorn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alcorn. You know, people get oh, mad yeah. when you say, yeah. oh, oh, "Excuse oh, me." Alcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so you get down there. What, uh-huh. what, what were you studying? I was studying business administration. Studying business admin. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, so let's get to the nitty gritty. I want to know the story. So how yeah. okay. how did it how did Linden Grill kind of develop down there at, at HBCU? HBCU. Right. Yes. Uh, how did that how did that environment and just that studying business admin kind of shape and mold the business? Okay. Um, uh, growing up on the east side, remember that mm-hmm. east side. <laughs> <laughs> growing up over there, it was me, um, my two brothers, and. Okay. Um, we lived in a house with um, mom and granny. We was raised by two women. Okay. Right mm. there on Georgiana Street. 1031 okay. Georgiana. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> right there. So um, they taught us everything. Mm-hmm. They taught us how to cook, how to clean, how to do our laundry, mm-hmm. pretty much how to be our own self-providers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that kind of stuck with me when I was in college. Uh, we didn't have the uh, things that y'all have now. Right. You know, it, it was rough back then. It yeah. was rough, you know, no cable TV, no cell phone, oh, no internet, no social media. Y'all got it good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, y'all got it good. We had none of that. So it was all about survival. Yeah. And um, being down there on a basketball scholarship, um, we, we got out of practice later than anybody. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes nine, ten o'clock at night, mm-hmm. and I lived in an athletic dorm. It was, um, I think, like four hundred of us. You know, all men Dang. cooped down there. You know, in the dorm late night. Um, you know, we we had fun and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But we got hungry. Facts. And the um, only thing we had was one little grocery store on the whole campus. Oh, wow. And they would close early. Yeah. Uh, well, at least early for us, you right. know, probably late for them. They've been there all day. Right. But um, come 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, we're sitting around eating ramen noodles and mm-hmm. spam. Yeah. And, uh, you know how that goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vienna sausages. And yeah. it just got old. Okay. And, um, you know, I... Um, I started cooking in my room, you know, call home, mama, you know, this ain't right, you know, I need, I need something better than this. So um, she sent me a couple of care packages, and um, I started cooking. I was, you know, cooking burgers, pork chops, and stuff, whatever, Damn. whatever I could get. I was cooking on a little hot plate. That's yeah. all I had was a little hot plate. Okay. And me and my roommate, we, you know, we started eating good, right? Yeah. And so as word traveled, you know, the smell traveled, people started coming down there, Mac, Mac, you know, what's that? You know, them burgers and pork chops. Yeah. You know how much for them? Oh, a uh, couple dollars. You know, because yeah. I, was, I was gonna give them away for free. Yeah. So, um, make a long story short, out of all four hundred, come to find out, I was the only one that could cook. 
Mm. So uh, it didn't take long at all before, you know, I went from the one of the basketball players to the biggest thing on campus. Right. You know, oh, I was right. the man down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well, I was the man. I remember one month I even made, uh, uh, what was it, um, Mail of the month. I think it was in October. I had a nice little shirt on. They put me in a magazine. I thought it because I looked good yeah. and could hoop. They yeah. said, no, that brother can cook. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, what's up. Yeah. That's what's so, up. So, um, you know, it just it just became, you know, like some, some football players, you know, kind of helped me take me over. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it was unintentional. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, the dean, you know, uh, like I said, all I had was a hot plate. Mm-hmm. Then I had two hot plates. And we had these little fuses that I used to pop just about every night, I'm popping fuses, man. Dean come up to Mac. Mac, we put had no hot plates in here, you know. Mac, Mac. So I'm like, oh man, you're killing me, you're killing me, man. I'm broke right yeah, now, you know. Yeah. I gotta re you re up my booze. Yeah. So he used to be the first person on the list. I feed him first, man. He changed the fuses and said words. Oh, okay. you know, he cool, wow. you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So that's when my hustle that's began loud. for food. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, after that, you know, long story, <laughs> how that went down. Mm-hmm. After that, came back, came back here. Mm-hmm. I had um, I had worked at this uh, warehouse for the four years I was in high school. Okay. My um, my older brother got me in there. So uh, when I came back home, um, ironically, I had a double degree, business administration and accounting, and it was a group of four of us that went in together. Okay. And um, I was the only one that went to HBCU. I think it was one from Purdue. IU, um, Ball State, or Butler, okay. something like that. And when we came back, they offered them um, placements in management in, you know, the business. And for me, they offered me, you know, hey, you know, we got a position for you in the warehouse. You know, I had the most seniority. You know, if anything becomes available, you know, you can apply for it. That just didn't sit right with me. I'm like, man, you know, hold on. I got mm-hmm. two degrees, you know, yeah. and you yeah. might not know where they come from, but I'm a little intelligent. Yeah, right. So I um, stayed there for a little while, couldn't do it. I decided I wanted to be my own boss. Yeah. And, um, you know, kind of surveyed what I'm good at. And I made my way through college cooking, so. Wow. Yeah. So the two went hand in hand. Yep. Wow. wow. Yep, yep. And um, I still came home playing basketball. Oh, I love basketball. I thought I was going to the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> I, came, I came right here and went out, you know, um, playing ball in Mishawaka. There's a few places we played at, um, hoops, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And we was out there, and I got the phone call back in 99 mm. that I got my permits to open up at Linden Grill. You okay. know, they said you pass all your inspections, you can open up. I remember like yesterday, June 26, 1999. I ain't picked the basketball up since. <laughs> 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 I went straight in the kitchen, got yeah. to cooking, yeah. and uh, here we are downtown now. Wow. Man. Yeah. Wow. Yep, yep. So, so I was just curious on the transition <laughs> of like, I know for most people that starting a business, and for me myself, when I mm-hmm. had started my brand, it was hard for me to find good team members um, and good people to surround yourself with and, and <laughs> believe in your dream as you <laughs> believed in it. Um, kind of talk about how you how you dealt with that and how you built an amazing team around you to have a successful franchise business. It started with family. Mm. It started um, with, uh, with my ex-wife, and my brother and his wife. Um, my mom, my mm-hmm. sister, I mean, they all pitched in. They, they seen the hard work and effort. And um, the way it started, um, I didn't have the money. The equipment, I didn't realize how expensive equipment was. Yeah. So um, I took the building and cut it in half and put a, a grocery store, a convenience grocery store on one side yeah. until I got the money saved up for the equipment on the um, kitchen side. So um, what I would do was I got on the phone with Pepsi, Coke, uh, 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 what was it, a uh, Little Debbie, uh, Frito, Frito-Lay. I call all them, you know, um, I want to start selling you guys product. So it was easier than I thought. They said, hey, uh, here's the deal. You got decent credit. Um, we bring our product in and our racks on a, a 7, 14, or 21 day um, consignment COD, but you can only put our product on our rack. I'm like, so I don't owe you anything. You're going to be in your racks, your product. I just can't put anything up. That's the deal. Yeah. Cool. So that's how I started making money okay. in the grocery store okay. and then start financing the uh, kitchen side mm-hmm. myself through the grocery sales. Yeah. And once it got to that point, it was like, okay, now I'm ready to open up a kitchen, but I can't do it by myself. Right. My brother, oh my God, man, my life said, was still my best friend. I actually just hung up from me. <laughs> he jumped right in, you know, okay. didn't miss a beat. You know, man. Yeah, yeah you, you probably yeah, know my yeah, yeah, yeah. He jumped right in, didn't miss a beat. So, um, you know, hey, the whole family jumped in. They believed in me. They knew what I could do. They knew my resilience. Mm. And 
if I put my mind to it, they knew that it was going to work. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, we didn't know how uh, permanent it was going to be. <laughs> we are, you know, 20 plus years later. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it was something they knew I was serious about. Yeah. So then after, you know, um, the initial input of family, um, people started looking for employment, started looking for jobs. I'm like, okay, you know, I don't know what to pay you, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And kind of, you know, and, and, you know, still had this degree, so I had to result back to my knowledge that I learned in school. Right? Mm. My brother went to school, so we put our heads together and said, you know, hold on, we businessmen, so we're going to make it work. Right. Yeah. And so uh, that's a quick thing on how it happened. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that answered your question, no, but absolutely. that's kind of, that's kind of, it started with family, family. and, and okay. still family. Okay. My mom, she, um, she worked at the hospital for 38 years, mm. and she retired from the hospital. She came down here and started trying to boss me around, but you know, <laughs> so, so she still, you know, she still help out. Uh, my brother, when he in town, he help out. Yeah. Uh, sister, nieces, nephews, you know, um, and um, that's kind of how. I'm kind of the only family member here, but it's still a family business. Right. Whenever my kids are in town, they help out. Yeah. You know. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, whenever my mom has free time, she come here. Yeah. Um, but the people that work here are more than just employees. They family. Yeah. You know, um, not blood, but family from the heart. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Yeah. So, so you start the convenient slash kitchen side over there on Linden. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So after you get that and you doing that for a while start to have success what was the next move the next move in terms of a kind of the brick and mortar site what was the next link in that chain in the story um i had a buddy of mine um actually (laughs) from college uh we started shooting pool in the pool league and we traveled around to a few different places um and um, our home base ended up being the amvets and once again we're down there shooting pool you know um Drinking, having mm-hmm. a good time, uh-huh. hungry. Yeah. They didn't have a kitchen. Yeah. Hmm. Let's talk. You don't have nobody to run your kitchen. Yeah. So then I moved down there to run their kitchen okay. on evenings and weekends. Okay. Did that for about four years, and that kind of expanded my base to some people that didn't know about us. And then after that, then we had an opportunity to move on Western. Uh, I had initially um, closed Linden to do some repairs. Mm-hmm. After talk to some contractors and stuff, and you know, it was like, man, you don't need a band aid, you need stitches on this building, oh. you know, if you want to, you know, do it right. Yeah, so I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna close it for a couple of months, okay. And uh, we stayed over on Western, you know, doing things over there, doing things over there, mm-hmm. and um, months, you know, weeks turned into months and stuff, yeah. and then it was the opportunity to move downtown, yeah. Mm. And it was downtown on Linden Street. Downtown on Linden Street. Ah, Linden gonna be there. Right. So then that's how we end up moving downtown. Mm-hmm. And we're still making our way back to Linden. Uh, yeah. Believe me, we are. Wow. I promise. Yeah. Okay. I promise. Good. Because we got some plans for Linden too. We okay. Got, oh, we got <laughs> yeah. some plans over there too. Yeah, yeah. I heard, I, heard. Yeah. I heard. I heard. I stay in the loop. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think um, as far as uh, we kind of walked us through the story of the business, right? Mm-hmm. And and how it was so much about family. And, and for you, I just I want to ask the question, how did you learn to separate um, business from family? Or did you ever separate business from family? Did you take the business home with you? Or was it a time where it's like, all right, we at home, it's no more Linden Grill. It's just the Mac family. You know what I'm saying? I haven't got to that point yet. Yeah. <laughs> Linden Grill followed me everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It followed. And I, I really need to, you know, I have a small separation, but not enough. And I hear right. it a lot. You know, I, I hear it that I need to, but I just need this place. I mean, yeah. and if, if it's not right, if it's a, if it's a mistake, it's not a Linden Grill mistake. It's a finding mistake because, you know, and I'm so... In mm. tune and on a first name basis and a personal relationship yep. with so many of my customers that if something's not right, they're on the phone calling me. They don't call here. Right. right so, right. Um, 
it's kind of intertwined. Yeah. yeah. And um, I've literally seen that. My mom be doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Something go yeah. wrong and she's like, I'm right. about to call I'm about to call Fadi, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, it, it, it's a good thing, but I would love for it to have its own wheels and turn. Mm-hmm. And I would love to be able to take a vacation and some time to myself. Yeah. I would love that. Like right now, we're doing this interview, my phone in the office. I'm like, who called me? Is he reading? Yeah. What's right. going on? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But um, um, that's. That's something that the separation is hard to do. When, when I have good pieces in place, and I'll be honest, I, I love the pieces that I have, and I have some very good people that I believe and trust in, but me personally, I don't know if I put the business in position to step away yet. Mm-hmm. So that's why I haven't, okay. you know, completely. When I mean step away, I don't mean not having anything to do. I mean letting it turn and work on its own. Right, and, right. Um, uh, 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 I can't sit back. I, I, I got to be involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. Dang, that's tough. So, yeah, I think, man, that's crazy. That's crazy to think about. <laughs> and, and for me, my experience with Lyndon just – from the grocery store all the way through, you know, I've been around. Oh, just from man, we shorty, love it. We love it, yeah. And uh-huh. so yeah. Um, it's so exciting to see, like, how places can grow right from the mud or the soil that we come from. Right. Right, and it's like um, you reap with yourself. That's you know true. what I'm saying? And it's like when you plant that seed and you watch it grow and blossom to now, um, soon to be three three stores or three Locations. restaurants. Right. right. That's that's amazing thing and just – what, 20 years? Yeah. Man, yeah. that's an amazing thing. Now, how do you feel when you reflect back um, and just look from the college dorm room to where you are now, where you then pushed a couple kids through college? Yeah. And so it's like, yeah. how do you reflect on that? And do you ever just take the time to sit back like, wow, look what I've done? I haven't. Hmm. I'm listening to you. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah whoa. Yeah. I, uh, I haven't. I haven't reflected on it yet. Maybe because I'm still in the box. I haven't stepped out to look and see, you know, how it evolved. Yeah. But um, I, I, I haven't really absorbed it yet because uh, I still, it, it's, I'm still so involved right. in it. And um, I love it. Hmm. I, I really do. You know, I think about y'all, man. I remember when y'all both was, you know, <laughs> tall as this right here. <laughs> you know, I know both of y'all. Mom, dad, I mean, you know, it's just, and when we were growing up, you know, um, and I know this might be going off, you know, track no, a little bit, no. but when we were growing up, we had the Charles Martins. Mm-hmm. We had, you know, people that was right there, you know, pushing you through, and the world wasn't moving so fast, and people were actually able to, um, to assist you. Okay. It's moving so fast now that it's all touch, see, and feel, yeah. right? And that's important to me because you can touch, see, and feel me. So I'm not Charles Martin, but I'm tangible, and I'm trying to be a role model that people can actually see and not have to look on your phone or your TV screen. You can go down the street and see that this can happen, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I might not ever be a, a NBA football, a NFL player, I might not ever make it in the rap game, or I might not ever be on um, Housewives of South Bend or whatever, yeah. <laughs> but I can own a leaning roof. Right. And yeah. I can start in a corner in my neighborhood yeah. because I seen Fonny do it. And the thing about it is, I used to ask Charles Martin questions that he had answers to before Google. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. he researched it, and now I've done the hard work and met people downtown from the state. I made a lot of mistakes along the way. So I'm the person people can talk to and learn. Yeah. You know, you you might not get the same opportunities that I have, but you get the same information because you can get it from me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and in um, and, and, and the black community, you know, I keep it real in the black community, there's a lot of jealousy, a lot of envy, mm-hmm. and a lot of you're fine with someone's success as long as it doesn't outshine yours. Right. Do you know that I hope that we get more black restaurants? We need more. Yeah, I agree. We don't need to be pitted against one another. We need to help one another. Yeah. You know, don't compare Lyndon Grill to Frankie's. Me and Sean, real good friends. Yeah. You know, you know, and know that we're trying to help each other grow. Yeah. And I want him to be success, successful like he want me to be. Yeah. And I want you to be. You, be, I love this sitting with y'all, man. Yeah. You know, this is. I feel like Charles Martin right now. Yeah, as you should. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, this is all I want is for more of us to realize that it's possible. And I know that 
you can believe it if you can see it. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. yeah. And that's pretty much what the show is all about. Literally. Right. That's what it's literally, literally all about. That's what's up. So the youngsters can see. Yeah. Um, but what's that really is possible. That's possible. It's possible. Very, very possible. So with that, I mean, you took, you kind of took us right where we want to go, right? So like I stated kind of pre-interview, a lot of people that watch our show, they either got an idea for a business, they work in a starter business, or they, they're running a business right now. Mm-hmm. So... What is some advice that you would give them, like, on their journey that they're on? Like, even some advice that you think that was prevalent or that you learned along the way, like, that you could give them right now, what, what would you say? As a small business, let me see, um, how would I phrase this? As a small business, one of the most important things is whatever business you own, start, run, manage, you have to be able to do it. Because uh, people will fail you. People will let you down. People will not show. And the show can't stop. Right. So anything in here I can do. I, I fix sinks now. You know, I, I put toilets in. I do it all. I even do drywall. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, a lot of my contractors have failed me. Um, uh, technically being paid, not showing up. Yep. Not finishing the job. You know, um, from, like I say, from the plumber to the janitor, you know, I can install fryers now, but also I still put out the best food, right. <laughs> you know, and I can go back there and still train somebody how to do it my way. Mm. So when you ask that, you know, I've seen a lot of people try to start a business and push it off to someone else to run and mm. they, in, they, in the, you know, in the clueless on what's really going on yeah. kind of like a, um, NBA players you know who, who just make all this money get a finance to somebody no clue how to manage money mm. and after the after the season after you know your career you broke yeah. you know and you need to be able to manage what you do you need to be able to uh, obtain and continue to do what you started yeah. um, that's my piece of advice wow. um, don't open up a car dealership if you don't know how to drive mm-hmm you know, yeah. and if I didn't know how to cook, if I didn't know how to bartend or serve or, or do multiple things, multiple hats that I wear, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Wow. Be here. One question I was always curious about mm-hmm. is, uh, how did you how did you put down the ball after leaving school? What was it? Was it tough for you? Was it always, was it ever a pullback to where like you had an itch where you wanted to get back into the game? Or how was that for you? How did I do what? Put down the basketball. Put down the basketball? Got that phone call. Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, um, I started to see in college, you know, I knew I had um, maxed it out. Right. Um, back then, you know, this was uh, right when the Penny Hardaways, you know, the 6'5", the 6'6", six, six, six point guards, 6'8", six, uh, point guards. Okay. Um, and I kind of I kind of knew I was where I was going to be. I actually had an offer to go overseas, hmm. but here was the trick to it. Now, you're talking about back in 89. I mean, we're back in 92 now. Um, I could go overseas. My brother, we, me and him had talked about it. I go overseas. Um, I had to get my own transportation over there. I had to make the team. And then I had to find me a place to stay. Then the reimbursement started. Mm. You know, I'm like, man, hold on. I just sold two burgers. That's all I got in my pocket <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah. I can't even re up my burger game yet. Yeah. But um, it, it became a reality, and then it really became a reality when my uh, my my partner, my roommate, my friend Lindsey Hunter, when he started, I'm like, hey man, this dude is better than I thought he was, yeah. you know. And he's lead material, and um, I kind of knew then mm-hmm. that I was gonna be a um, a hometown hero yeah, rather yeah. than a national hero. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, yeah. right, Wow. Yeah. yeah. Just the realization of wow. it. For sure. Yeah. For sure. But it wasn't my uh, it wasn't my all. It wasn't my everything. Um, believe it or not. Believe it or not, I was one of the smartest ones in my high school and that transferred to college. When I, my freshman year and no, nobody should try this, please. I never had a book my freshman year. Hmm. Never had a book. Couldn't afford a book. But I never got less than a I think I had one C in my four years of college. Uh. I just obtained the information, just absorbed it. You know, I had partners and, you mm-hmm. know, friends. We were kicking. They'd be like, dude, how do you remember that? I'm like, I paid attention. Yeah. You know, and, and some things just came natural to me. And so uh, I knew that my calling was, uh, you know, not on the court. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 
Man, we so thankful that you did come back. <laughs> man. We really appreciate that yeah, for real. Seriously, though, seriously. Appreciate man. Appreciate man. Thank you for coming back into our community yes. and doing the great things that you do. And, Thank you. And, and inspiring people like, like us and yeah. even younger generations. Right. Like, yeah. um, it, it's really, like, really appreciate man, you. Man, appreciate you. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for real, man. It, it, this is a pleasure. Yeah. I'm, I'm serious. And I, I would just say, I would just concur with this statement. I think that us as young entrepreneurs, um, individuals that are seeking that business mind, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to open up a business and properly run a business um, so that we can pass down to our future generations. Um, right. I think that you serve as an inspiration. Thanks. I think I you serve it. as an inspiration I to us. Because we always in here. Yeah. <laughs> we always in here. I see y'all. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we and always you know, in here. And, 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 you know, the thing about repeat customers is customers.